Hello friends and welcome to another episode of Change. In today's changing world, every aspect that we look at, as constant as it might appear, is undergoing change. One of the things that we see today in our workplaces is the share of women participating in it. Once upon a time, it was frowned upon to see a woman working along with men. But today, slowly, gradual changes have happened and women share the same amount of workspace. The same thing happens in the field of education, where co-education has stepped up, girls' literacy rates have shot up. Slowly, there are a lot of positive changes that are happening. But is it enough? Have we given women their due? Has our attitude towards women changed? It's a question to ponder upon. Let's see where we as a society stand in giving out their share to women. Today, we have a woman of spirit. We have Rajyogini Brahmakumari Usha Didi with us. Didi, welcome to the show. Thank you. Like always, many people say that women are powerful enough to run the whole world. And it's very popularly said that the hands that can move the cradle can move the world as well. Yes, yes. As much as we understand the power of women, we still use the term women empowerment. So, it sometimes feels that we are in a jeopardy. We do not know whether we actually need empowerment for the women or women are already empowered. What are your views on it? I think women are already empowered because, as you said, that they have the potential in so many aspects, not just within the homes, but in managing the family as well as understanding the members of the family. As somebody has rightly mentioned that the most perfect creation of God is a woman. When he created woman, he created a balanced personality in the woman. She is soft and hard both ways. So the soft part is she is caring, nurturing, taking you know, concern about the feelings of others. But at the same time, when she comes into becoming hard, she can do wonders. That is what we have seen. And that is why I feel that the founder of this organization, Brahmak Maris, he also visualized that it is only when the women come in the front that we'll be able to build a new society, a new world of order. Because till now, when the reins were in the hands of the men, slowly and gradually you can see the deterioration in many values coming down. Why? Because the ego level of a man has raised so much. And that is why the values they start dispersing. But in a woman, we find that she is still caring. And therefore, the founder realized that if she can be trained in or she can be empowered in spirituality, then she is able to bring the world in a rising direction as well. In the Hindu culture, we see that there is Durga on one side, which is the embodiment of Shakti. On the other hand, we find Saraswati, who is the embodiment of wisdom or knowledge. And we find Lakshmi, who is the embodiment of wealth. So. All the necessities which a man needs in today's world, whether it is power or it is wealth. In the Hindu religion, there is a goddess for that. Mm. There is no gods for it. Yes. A man may go in army to fight, but in order to get the power, he would always bow down in front of a Durga. 
the Shakti, the women of power. Similarly, when a person goes to study, he would bow down in front of Saraswati, the goddess of knowledge. And whenever he goes out to earn wealth, bows down in front of Lakshmi, Lakshmi. the goddess of wealth. So the three basic essential qualities is with the women and that is why she can make a person rise also and she can make a person fall also. Mm. That is the power she has. So you really mean to say that women need not be empowered, they are already powerful Already enough. powerful. Yes. Um, there are a lot of, lot of things that are happening on the, on the political uh, field out there where people are talking about girls need to be educated and other aspects of it. Let us talk about the education aspect today. And like you said about Saraswati and Lakshmi and, and Goddess Durga, embodiments of wisdom, knowledge and wealth and power. Let's talk about knowledge and wisdom where women stand today. And I think um, from where we started, as a human race, at least now in the past few years, in the past 50 years, maybe 60 years, in the last 100 years, I would say, in a century, we have seen that women have really come up in terms of education. Not that they were not educated, they had the wisdom, they possessed the knowledge, but in terms of education, like literacy, that was denied to them. And mm. many women have, mm. have fought. And uh, especially in India, Savitri Bai Phule and a lot of other women who, who took up the mantle of educating girls and, and we have come a long way from there. And it has been the same case in, in other countries too, I believe. Slowly, slowly now we see that um, girls are in equal number as much as the boys are. Yeah. So there is no discrimination at least. One of the positive changes that we see, in fact we see, is every year when we see the the results for matriculation exams or higher secondary school mm -hmm. exams, it always happens, it always happens, at least for the past decade, it has ha happened every year that the girls outshine boys. Yeah, they are toppers. So this is a big change, don't mm -hmm. you think? Mm -hmm. Because uh, um, girls, I would say, from the childhood, they are trained in that manner, that uh, they possess that wisdom, it's inbuilt in them. It is not that they have to go somewhere to learn and get that wisdom. But because her EQ level is quite high, that is why she is able to digest the knowledge also which she studies in not just at this level, mm -hmm. but she is able to bring it to her heart. And that is why when she give her exams, she writes from her heart. We still hear statistics say that the number of girls who pass out of higher secondary education and then they have to move for higher education where they have to pursue a degree or maybe post-graduation or a bachelor's degree and above that, the percentage goes down. The number of girls who pass out from higher secondary school not all of them get into uh, a bachelor's degree course. Mm -hmm. And even lesser percentage, less than half of them, think of going into a post-graduation. And post-doctoral, I do not think so. There are very few. There's, I would say you could just count them on fingers where mm -hmm. from each mm -hmm. university mm -hmm. where girls would participate mm -hmm. in a mm -hmm. doctoral program or mm -hmm. something. So even though there are changes in the basic level of literacy, but in terms of actual education and higher education, we see that there is a serious concern in terms of whether it is professional education or mm -hmm. whether it is medical education, engineering or anything. Because maybe the parents, they feel that uh, basic education was required for the girl and that is why they have provided the girls with those basic education. And afterwards, they feel that finally she has to go and look after a household only. So maybe they uh, try to train the daughters in more like household activities or in those areas so that whenever she 
uh, goes into a household life then she can be a successful woman there as well so that she can take care of her house very well and her children and the in-laws maybe and each and every one so i believe that that may be the idea behind the whole thing and there are some parents who feel no why should she just get that much of education sometimes the parents have this feeling that my girl should be trained in such a manner that she should be all rounder mm. you know sometimes they unknowingly they are not developing the right brain they are still developing the left brain okay you go into some karate classes this that so many other bold where she can take up the challenge and beat the world you know so in this case somewhere we need to rethink that why are our children failing in today's world and they are not able to because once a person breaks up in relationship that is where they get hurt you know their emotions their feelings are so much damaged because it was not a one day and the uh, there was a divorce over a period of time it went on and so they were like attacking one another and in that process they get damaged a lot hmm. so they get, develop a disinterest for this world and they sometimes either they land up in depression or sometimes they revolt in such a way with a lot of anxiety anxiety mm. and they have serious mental problems we talk about equality we talk about equal share for women also mm. but we also know the reality um let's talk about the film industry for instance uh in the indian film industry especially the hindi film industry that we talk about we know that the the actors the heroes get get paid uh crows together for a movie where the where the actress the heroine who also plays the lead role but she's a heroine just because she's an she's a female she gets paid like close to 30 lakh rupees or 20 lakh rupees for a movie so there is a huge gap between um the pay scales how much one earns and they are also putting in the same amount of effort even though we might talk about equality but we still see there is a gender gap the gender gap i would not say it is out there but it is in our minds too this was because that in today's society people felt people did not have the right understanding that mm. both the hemispheres need to be developed this is where spirituality helps us mm -hmm. because when we come in the spiritual field the spiritual field is where the right brain is developed so although because of the modern education or modern um, world where we have a lot of exposure through internet and everything so definitely the left brain is developed automatically but spirituality then balances with the right brain this is how a balanced personality not just in the girls but even in the boys when their spiritual personality is also developed so that is right brain so it is a balanced and that's why it is said that in the ancient times where the gods and goddesses were they also lived in a household life but they enjoyed because there was a balanced personality in both the characters so although in the world people are talking about equality and everything but maybe they have not understood the meaning of equality mm. which equality are, are we talking about first equality is here the yes. left brain and right brain has to be equally developed because when that is developed definitely we find they'll be they will be successful whether it is a household life or whether it is a professional life today we find in professional fields in corporates also so much of ego clashes and there is no solution to ego clashes mm. many 
many corporations are breaking up, collapsing. Just because of this, ego clash, no, no solution. HRD is trying to um, bring in training programs, attitudinal change and all these types of change programs. And finally, they don't have a solution. Mm. Because the solution is with spirituality only. It is only when the spiritual aspect is brought in that the both hemispheres have to be developed and this is complete development. Mm. This is equality. When you talk about equality now and how spirituality blends it in, um, I just recollect um, listening to someone about this and it was shared very beautifully that no matter whether you are a, you are a man or a woman, whether you are a boy or a girl, but you come from the same same source. That means your both parents have contributed equally to your growth. Yes. That means half chromosomes from from your mother and half of it from your father has come in. That is when your creation was possible. Yes. And going on to religion, mm. Hinduism, many people mm. have also argued that people see God as Ardhanarishwara. He is half man, has half woman. Yes. And not only that, but even in prayers, we would worship God as you are the father and the mother. Mother, yes. Even though he is one person, but he is worshipped both as father and mother and addressed like yes, this. Yes. So, somewhere in the spiritual roots, like you said, spirituality has the answer. Before I ask that answer from you, there are roots where it showed that, yes, there was a balance. Both things were equal. There was no differentiation. Whether a man or a woman makes no difference. What was that equal vision? What was that equal answer that you said spirituality has an answer to this equality? How would spirituality bring this inequality? Because as you said for God, that although he is one being, but we call him mother and father. So similarly, soul has no gender. Soul is neither a male nor a female. So when I become soul conscious, being soul conscious means developing both the qualities within me. Because in this journey through the cycle, we have been playing many types of characters. Just as we say this world is also a drama. And when the world is a drama stage and we are all like actors. So sometimes I have put on the costume of a female, sometimes I have put on a costume of a male. Various costumes have been changing because the soul has no gender of its own. So it can enter into a male body also, it can enter into a female body also and play its role. But now when I become soul conscious, I develop both the qualities in me. The qualities, the original qualities of the soul is beautiful. It is knowledgeful. It is a pure being, peaceful being, loveful being. So all these qualities. So when I develop these qualities and bring them out, then you develop a complete personality. And this is how spirituality has an answer. Mm. So, you do not actually look at the person, but you look at the personality. Yes. So, you're not just seeing a person as, oh, he's a, he's a male person, he's a female, she is a female, but a, a soul. Yeah. So, when I develop that soul vision, then there are positive feelings. So, the negativity is completely ruled out. Today, all the clashes in the world whether it is between male and female, whether it is in corporates between two males also, two females also, it is because of the root cause of body consciousness. Sure. Because we look at the body, that's why this gender also comes in. That's why this feeling also comes out and ego problems also come out. Mm. So all the root cause of all the negativities is body consciousness is lying there. So what you're really saying is the attitudinal change that we expect for a woman as a whole 
is not just for women. It is about an attitudinal shift for seeing everybody as a person. Yes. And if we change that attitude, that vision of looking at a person, not just as a human being, not just as, as a male or a female, but, but as something which is beyond that, as a personality, then we could achieve that equality in the Definitely. society and it would yes. be easily possible. Mm. As much as I wonder about it, I think our, our friends who are watching this would also think and ponder about it, that where is that we bring about a change now? Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing those thoughts, Devi. Thank it's you. It's my pleasure. The more I talk about these things, the more I would want to talk about it because there is so much depth to it. We want to give women equal opportunities. We want to create a better world for them. And we think that we are with them in, in whole of this. They are half of us and we are half of them. But what we always think is, we think that we need to give them space or opportunity, but not necessarily. Creating opportunities or giving them space or giving the right kind of education would not help as long as we do not change our vision towards them, as long as we do not start treating them as equals. Not just looking at the physical aspect of their bodies, but to look beyond, to look them as the same as we are. It's a big change for today. Thank you for being with us. We'll see you in the next episode. Till then, take care.